So uh, starting off, we got the WeBoost uh, antenna. We do all of our um, internet using the Verizon hotspot. And so that gives us extra juice. And um, maybe in nine months that we were out, we had three or four days that we didn't have internet. The rest of the time it worked great. Behind it is the air conditioning cowl. Uh, I wanted it to look as commercial as possible and I didn't want to do a whole fiberglass cowl so I ended up getting a culvert pipe, cutting it in half and mounting it to the front of the truck which uh, gave it the, the reefer look. And then you'll see there's a, a floodlight and there's floodlights on all four sides and cameras on all four sides uh, so that when we're inside if we hear noises we're able to light the place up and see what's going on on the outside. In this, we had the Chinese diesel heater and uh, at one point it stopped working because it was sucking gas out of the tank and it was just a little bit too far away. And so we ended up having to bring a diesel tank over close to it. And I wanted to hook it up underneath here, but I also needed to be able to fill it. So I put it on the track. And you can see, slides down the track, you can fill it and then it slides back up into place. This is my main storage. has my uh, foldable electric bike that goes in there and my uh, ladder, collapsible ladder, so I can get up on the roof and uh, carries oil and coolant and whatever else I need. Uh, so that's one box. And you'll notice that all the boxes are supposed to look like toolboxes. And this one here has just got a plywood front and I took an old toolbox face, mounted to the front of it, just so that it wouldn't cause any suspicions. This is the stealth uh, camera for this side of the truck. And it's designed to just kind of fit in with the pattern of the rivets on this side. But that gives me a view on the outside without having to mount a camera up on top um, where it would be noticed. This is the uh, propane generator. It's an Onan 2800. Um, the thing about this is I got it sealed up inside boxes in order to reduce the sound so that it's not annoying to people. You can usually stand about four or five feet away from it. You won't interrupt a conversation. But because of that, uh, I needed a way to keep cool air going around it. So there's a, on this end of it, uh, there's a squirrel fan and the squirrel fan blows cool air through the boxes to keep the, the uh, generator cool while that's running. And the generator operates the air conditioner in the front and then it goes to a plug on the inside uh, that allows me to recharge the batteries off of it or to use tools if I need to. Um, on this side, the only thing that's not stealth on the truck is the propane tank. and. Uh, at one point, I'm going to go ahead and paint that black, but uh, there's the propane that runs the hot water heater, the generator, and the stove. And then underneath here, uh, again, uh, this is the face off of a, a toolbox, a metal toolbox, uh, where the inside was rusted out. So I took it off and uh, added it to this case, this cabinet. And those are our water tanks. And so we have 35 gallons of fresh water, 34 gallon gray water, and then up front we have a 17 gallon recirculating shower uh, so that we can have long showers if we want to. And then this is the, uh, the receptacle bag uh, for the bag toilet up, to, up on top, and I'll show you that inside. But you just pop this out, toss it in the garbage uh, when it's full, and put a new one on. And then up front here is the pump house that has two pumps, one for the shower and one for the main water in, that, in, the, in the box. And the, uh, the pumps are actually mounted on springs. And the reason for that is because pumps have a real vibration that they send through and make a lot of noise. And by mounting them in the uh, pump housing on tension springs, I was able to get rid of a lot of the noise. I'm trying to keep this as uh, stealth as possible, so I wanted to put a winch on the front of the truck, but rather than mount the winch um, on the bumper on the outside, I mounted the winch on the inside uh, with the remote control, and there's also an up and down switch over there. 
And the goal with that was to allow me to uh, fall down into steep canyons and then have the winch help me get back out. I would say the one, one downside to the truck is how tall it is, it's 13.3. Um, that's three inches shorter than highway minimum highway height for commercial trucks. But in towns, particularly like in Louisiana and places like that, the tree branches are often lower than that. And so you're dodging tree branches and once in a while you're backing out of streets. But uh, other than that, the 13.3 is nice because it gives you an uh, eight foot ceiling on the inside. So that's kind of the outside of the, of the truck. Shall we go in? Yes. All right. So uh, one of the nice features of this truck is that it has a which means it's an elevator for my dad who's 95 and can't climb up the stairs. But you'll notice that it's when it's folded over, it has these three holes going through from this side and that'll make sense later. Uh, but the idea was that I could either have this folded in half where I was in tight space or bring it all the way out and turn it into a full uh, patio on the back. Come on up. And we'll do the patio in a minute, but let's go inside. Welcome to Harvey. The only part of the door frame that has to be solid in terms of the framing is where the hinges are. And so I took the other half of the door frame and turned it into a closet that holds the bug screen. And there's one on both sides and they can either be hooked to each other or hooked to the uh, metal door like that was. Ready for the next time. This is the tall closet. So it holds the broom and the mop. Um, it also holds the generator start and the power panel for the generator. And then this is also our security. Uh, we have uh, bear spray and a taser. And those are just kept by the back door because that's really the only place someone would come in. These are the floodlights on the outside that turn on. The cameras go to your telephone, so you can look on your telephone and see what's happening on all four sides of the truck. There's a, a PA system on the outside that has a series of sirens and uh, loud noises to make, but you also can push the button and say, step away from the vehicle. We haven't had to do it, but it's there. So let me show you a little bit about the electrical. Um, there are uh, three switches back here. Uh, the back one, they're all three-way switches, so the back one turns on the back light and then there's a light out, a switch outside that turns it on and off also. This one turns on and off the bedroom light and then inside the Murphy bed, at the head of the Murphy bed, there's another switch which also turns on and off this light so you can turn the bedroom light off when you're in bed. And then this one turns on the lights in the main cabin and there's another switch up front uh, that turns them on and off as well. So three-way switches make it really convenient to move in and out of the vehicle. These are uh, our has hassocks, little fold-up hassocks, uh, in case you want a little extra comfort. Ah. This bar across here, I call it the walking bar because when the bed is down, uh, this is what I hold on to, to walk across. It also holds the blankets that we use out on the back deck often and once in a while in here. And then under the blankets are uh, spare storage. We have two chairs and a small table slip into slots in the back there. This couch is actually not uh, one solid couch. It's long enough to sleep on, but it actually consists of a love seat and a, a separate lounge chair. Uh, and I took the handles off of them to make it into one thing. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to 
take them apart and reconfigure them in a variety of different ways. Uh, if it's really cold outside, uh, we can take the love seat, turn it at 90 degrees, and see the scenery outside without having to open the back door, not having to go out back. But this is our stereo system. It's a car stereo system that runs the music on the inside. It can hook up to Bluetooth uh, off our phones. And then my stepladder and uh, chair for the study there. I designed the Murphy bed so I didn't have to uh, do much to make it. I'm going to have to put these over here. I'll show you how the Murphy bed works. So the Murphy bed uh, is a full-size bed turned sideways and when you connect it up to the couch it becomes a king-size bed. And so we have a lot of uh, comfort with the king size bed. And uh, I won't bother making up the other side, but that's basically the bed. And then you can see up front we have uh, the light switch, which is uh, the three way for the bedroom light. And then we have uh, a plug, which gives you 110 volt, but also 12 volt for charging your phones at night. So that's been really handy. One of the problems in campers is that the mattress gets moldy and so they have a variety of things you can buy to put underneath there to keep air circulation. What I did was instead of putting plywood under it, I put pegboard, a thick commercial pegboard. And that gives lots of air and we haven't had any trouble at all. But under the sheet, the bottom sheet, has a uh, elastic strap that goes under the mattress. And then on top, it has an elastic strap that comes from this side and that just hooks on and off and that holds all the bedding in place when you're putting the bed up. And so that's been a really handy, handy feature. And then it only takes a couple of seconds to make the bed. So that's my bed set up. I got storage up above, cushions, blankets, pillows, that kind of thing. And then over here, uh, these are our hiking survival gear stuff. And then this, I don't know if you've seen these before, but this is a little buddy heater. Highly recommend it uh, when temperatures get to around 20 degrees. It's nice to have it augment the uh, Chinese heater. Last thing I'll show you is the uh, table. Uh, this is our main eating table. It just has the latch at the bottom. And the, uh, this folds down to give it support underneath. And that's, that worked out pretty well. Um, the one thing I am going to do is I'm going to add a piece that flips down. Because it's too far away from the couch for someone to sit on the couch. So you have to sit in chairs to eat there. And at times it's nice just to hang out on the couch and eat. I hope you will notice that our goal was to leave the inside of the truck as open as possible so it felt big. I designed things with these angles in them, with the angle back, uh, and no walls. And instead of walls, we use these curtains, which uh, provide privacy if someone's sleeping and the other person's working on the computer. Um, and then of course in the back here, there's another set of curtains that close off the back doors. And before we move forward, I should show you one last thing. Uh, we bought a couple of hats on the way and uh, there was no place to put them. I didn't want to hang hooks on the wall because they had bounced off. I thought, okay, well, I'll just make that out of a little bit of rawhide. And so it's a good way to preserve the hats and they don't get banged around in the truck and uh, seems to work pretty well. This is our laundry. Uh, we have our laundry basket down in here. The laundry uh, materials and such up above, and then we have a few things that we use in, at bedtime uh, that go in there as well. And up above that is kind of the main storage. Storage. Come on. And uh, there are eight of these cubicles, uh, and I kept tools and a variety of things in there as well as some clothes. 
This is for the shoes, and then uh, we didn't have much in the way of hanging clothes, uh, but this allowed us to hang a few nice things when we wanted to keep them from getting wrinkled up. And then down below, these were our main uh, clothes storage uh, drawers. Uh, they're 24 inches long uh, and nice and deep and so we were able to get almost all the clothes that we needed uh, for the trip in those four drawers. And please come on into the kitchen. Uh, so compared to a lot of um, campers there's just a tremendous amount of storage in here. Uh, all of the cabinets have multiple shelves that are movable to different heights as needed. Um, this is a recirculating hood. Uh, we have the skylight and the fan. Just a standard cook stove, uh, but it does have a full oven inside, so we can make pizza. And then down below is our booze and books drawer. And this is the drawer that we had wine bottles and books that we were reading. And then on the lower cabinet, uh, we have a full thick uh, cutting board, uh, which we used a lot. And then, you know, typical doors that you would expect in a, in a home. And then this is uh, the pull-out garbage and recycling. Uh, holds the garbage bags. And um, this, this is super handy, being able to just pull it out and shove it back in. Above the kitchen sink, up here, uh, there's one cabinet that's different from the others. And that is the dish drainer cabinet. And the dish drainer cabinet is set up to be right over the top of the sink. And so after we wash dishes, we just drop them up here and they drip dry into the sink. And it saves us the counter space uh, from doing the typical drying thing. And then this is our refrigerator. I originally planned to put a full-size refrigerator in, but because I was keeping the outside stealth, when they told me I had to cut a four square foot hole in the side of the truck to vent the uh, refrigerator, and that I had to have that hole, even if I had other ways of venting the refrigerator, I had to have the hole for maintenance that have to happen every year. And then I found out that uh, in order to use those kinds of refrigerators, you have to always keep the uh, RV level because otherwise it can mess up the internal workings of the, of the refrigerator. Uh, so I abandoned that idea and went for this. This is a great Dometic uh, refrigerator and it's got lots lots and lots of space uh, inside. Uh, I don't think we ever felt like we were uh, short. Uh, this can be a freezer or it can be part of the refrigerator. We just left it part of the refrigerator. Um, but yeah, so this is the dual Dometic and uh, I can highly recommend it. The only trouble we had with it were the latches. If the latches are uh, like this and the hook comes down, it can snap the latch off. So we had to I think two or three times uh, reach out to them and they were kind enough to send us replacement latches and this is the locking mechanism this uh, swivels in and then that swivels over and that keeps it from coming out while we're driving and the space underneath is built to be the size of a 12 pack of soda so you can put uh, multiple soda uh, boxes underneath it. This is the heater controller uh, for this is the heat vent down here uh, on the floor and that uh, warms up the truck pretty nicely. Um, here's a map that shows kind of where we were on our trip over the last nine months. Uh, there were a few places that are in uh, black where we would not go back but other than that everything else was uh, stellar and we had a great time. Wonderful trip. Air conditioner, standard household air conditioner with the cowling I showed you before out front. And then um, I'll show you the security here. Uh, this is obviously the pass-through to the front. Um, but at night, we close this, and we can either leave this open to allow airflow to come through, which we really didn't need because we have the skylight and all. There's simply no way for anybody to get from the cab to the back at this point uh, because there's no way to move this out of the way, and it just all blocks everything. I'll show you our uh, filter system for the water. I didn't want to have to climb around underneath the truck uh, in order to do the water filters. And so I built all the water filters, the main water filters, on a slide-out panel. 
and this uh, you'll see there's two sets there's the blue one for the house water the three white ones uh, for the shower water which is recirculating and then this is a UD UV uh, filter which uh, kills all the bugs uh, in the water and so uh, I can just clean them out in here with my little uh, this little bucket these things are great a little expandable bucket slip them underneath take off the filters it's easy peasy nice and clean and easy uh, behind this mirror is the water heater so the mirror just slips up and off and uh, I can get access to the water heater if I need to and then this is our our bathroom setup shower uh, here and I'll show you that in a minute so we got places for towels we've got the bathroom the toilet uh, I, I just really dislike uh, the entire concept of uh, black water uh, in my trailer I had a black water tank and it just was emotionally difficult for me to empty it I hated it so instead I made uh, what is a bag toilet by taking the lid of this toilet and swapping it with the bottom so I put the bottom on top and the lid underneath and then cut a hole through the lid and then this just hooks on like that with tension and then this clip makes sure it doesn't slip and then we use a uh, kitty litter this multi-cat kitty litter and now the bag's ready for use and when the bag is full or when you're uh, done with something stinky you just take one of these put it around here like that it flips up take this off you got your bag of stuff push this lever down and what that does is there's a plate that's sitting down and it lifts that plate up which allows this to open and then your bag just drops down like that and goes to the outside collection bag and you're ready to start all over so that's our bag toilet we, i really liked it a lot better uh, than uh, than having a great a black water tank that i had to find a dump site and all that kind of stuff basically those can be thrown away anywhere just the way you would diapers uh, they're all it's all coagulated in the the kitty litter and uh, does a good job so anyway, so that's our toilet, and then over here we have a small sink for doing uh, brushing teeth and that sort of thing. And then above that, store. Uh, let's see. Ah, the last most important thing about the bathroom is the Dr. Dew's special. Because the toilet paper ought to be where it ought to be. All right, so the shower. Uh, we have uh, mounted uh, soap dispensers up on the, on the glass here on the shower. This is uh, Trex decking. The shower curtain, I'm not sure if you can see this, but the shower curtain surrounds the shower like this. And you get a fairly uh, nice, it's about 32 by 44 inch shower space in here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a fairly large space uh, for taking a shower in, a, in an RV. And then the water goes down into a, a shower pan that I made out of fiberglass. And the thing about it was, because I didn't know uh, what angle the truck was going to be on, I actually put drains in all four corners. So whatever angle the truck is at, the water will go rushing out and go down. So the shower is like, it's kind of like taking a hot tub. Uh, the water is, uh, is uh, recirculated, uh, but it's also uh, cleaned. Uh, and so it's, it's comfortable to take a shower. And you can stay in there as long as you want. That's the nice part. Oh, we got a nice, it's a full regular household shower head on it. Uh, so it's got a good blast and then we've got these little hooks if you want to hook up your clothes and that sort of thing before you go in yeah 
And this is the on off switch for uh, the house water and the shower water. And it also turns on the UV filter uh, whenever we're pumping water. All right, well, let me show you these uh, skylight and the fan because these are important features for a van that does, or a truck that doesn't have any uh, windows. So you can see we get uh, a lot of light uh, through the front and a lot of light through the back doors, uh, but the skylight's really important. And this lets us uh, open and close the skylight. We get air through. Uh, and then this is a shade so that we can darken the room and not be awakened in the morning so we can sleep till 10 o'clock if we want to. And then above your head over here is the max air fan and that lets you set uh, temperatures and have the air flow in and out uh, depending on how what you want to do with it. So I think the last part of the interior here for me to show you is the study. And uh, what you don't see immediately in looking at this is the fact that uh, it's shallow about this deep, and then behind it is all the solar electronics. So the wires coming in from the roof go in behind this, um, all of the, the fusing and um, the controllers and all of that go in here. And down under here is where we have uh, the batteries, and we have four 100-hour uh, lithium batteries. And this is our uh, charger. Uh, so when we're in really bad weather uh, and we're not getting enough solar, we have about 400 watts on the roof. Throughout the south and the Midwest, we had no problem. But when we were on the West Coast and it was rainy, uh, we would pull into a uh, campground and plug in and, and recharge the batteries overnight. Uh, generally, the 400 watts was enough. Uh, if I were to do it again, I would uh, put 600 up there probably. Um, and then this is my study, and uh, this is, uh, you can see the charge controller back there, so it allows you to know uh, where you are in terms of your percentage in your batteries. And then that's the fuse box up there, and that lets you change fuses as needed. Um, you know, obviously a little desk light, uh, this is the hot spot. Uh, and this is for the blank cameras. Uh, but yeah, uh, the other thing I should show you on this is it's hard to support a uh, drop down. Uh, sometimes they make uh, boards that come out and it drops down to those. What I did was I built this drawer and then I put this little finger there. And then you have nice support uh, for working on your desk. Um, I should show you that because the desk would be down, you would not have access to that top drawer, which is often where you have pens and pencils. So I designed it with little side drawers that pull out uh, to allow you access even when uh, the top is down. So. And then just regular drawers. This one was set up as a file drawer, so it takes eight and a half by 11 stacked this way. And then up on top, we have uh, storage, uh, so these are uh, just science, science stuff. Uh, we have a computer-based microscope and cameras and all that kind of stuff uh, kept up in there where it's nice and secure. And this whole, the whole cabinet is on uh, these trucks. I don't know if you can see that, but right there, there are wheels inside that U-shaped uh, metal. And that's how you, dis you disconnect the uh, cabinet from the wall up at the top there, and then pull it out on the trucks in order to get behind it. It's a bit of a hassle, but it works. Shall we head out to the back deck? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I showed you before about the fold-out uh, decking. Now I want to show you the staircase. Uh, these are put the staircase on these brackets. There's one on each side, so depending on which uh, which side you have space on, uh, you can put the stairs out. And then, of course, we have a, a little lock that holds it on here so that no one takes it in the middle of the night. But 
These are great. Get you in and out of the truck. Yeah. In the, in the uh, patio are for specific things. Uh, in particular, they are for um, the table. And the table goes like this. And then if you have uh, more company, and that slips over here and turns it into a full round table. Uh, we didn't do that very often, uh, but once in a while we had a couple of guests, so we did that. Uh, if we had the fire pit, um, then we don't want the table in the middle of the floor. And so the table can go here. Um, and then again, go over on this other side as well. All right. So we can set up chairs. And they will fit around. You just have to be careful. And we would do this uh, particularly if we had the awning out uh, where we couldn't have the porch swing up. And let me show you the awning. I purchased an awning, uh, or an awning was given to me that was of the typical uh, type that have aluminum poles. And the first wind storm, it turned it into spaghetti. I designed my own uh, awning made out of steel in order to ensure that I wouldn't have that problem again. The awning can come out. So, it's actually designed to bend in multiple ways, which you can see is a good thing at the moment. And uh, <coughs> we have a, a sheet which locks on this, uh, so you can have a side shade uh, or block the wind if you want to. Um, we also have, uh, and I'll show this later, but we have a bug room uh, that is a whole net uh, that hooks on underneath here in case there's a heavy mosquito problem. Um, but yeah, so this is the basics. And then this is an alternative way to use it that actually is pretty handy because it handles the wind better and uh, when there's rain it takes the rain right off of you. These, I don't know if you can see these, but these are square steel tubes. Um, there's some kind of complicated uh, angling that allows you to move them in different directions. And then you just Let me show you the one last, the piece de resistance. We spent most of our trip sitting right just like this, <laughs> looking at the most beautiful scenery you've ever seen. It's really quite nice. But we also have, to give it an augment, this. And now you have a fire pit. And so, uh, Anywhere where we could have a fire, uh, we would use the fire pit and uh, sit in the back and enjoy the sunset and have a beautiful day. So that is Harvey, and I hope you enjoyed it.